Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name's Molly, I'm the maker behind Lefty Knits, and this channel is where I share whatever crafty, knitty projects I've been up to recently. So this week, like many others, uh, I pretty much only have knitting to share with you. Uh, but if you wanna follow along on my social media and see sort of in real time what sort of crafty stuff I've been up to, you can follow me on TikTok and Instagram at lefty.knits. For those of you who saw my last episode, you know that I had a lot of whips that were kind of heading towards frogging. So this week things are kind of in flux. I'm in a weird place with a lot of my knitting. Um, so I actually don't have any finished objects for you today. Um, I think this will be a little bit of a short one, but I wanna share what I've been working on anyway. Um, so I guess we'll start with my works in progress. So, the first work in progress I have to share with you all today is the uh, Gib by Andrea Mowry. This is the Gib one, the, the more like feminine framed uh, one, you know, with like women's sizing, I suppose. Um, but, this is all progress. I cast this on since the last episode. So this is all progress I've made since then in the last couple weeks. Um, so in my last episode, I had used this yarn, which is a uh, Jagger Spun Zephyr, a 50% wool, 50% silk blend, uh, worsted weight. Uh, and the colorway I have for mine is Sable. And I had shared that I'd started working on the Billy Pullover with this yarn but I was deciding that that wasn't exactly what I wanted to use the yarn for. So I was finding that doing all over cables was causing some um, pain in my fingers and elbows. And I kind of thought like a drapey silk yarn wasn't exactly what I was looking for um, in terms of like a big cabled project. I decided I wanted something a little bit more structured and rustic as opposed to um, this yarn, which is like pretty soft and, you know, I expect to be a little bit more drapey. So I was trying to decide between the Gib and the, um, Nurtured Pullover. I pronounced it Jib last time, but I went back and watched some of Andrea Mowry's old podcasts and I now know that it is Gib. Um, so I ended up deciding on the Gib because it's work top down as opposed to nurtured, which is bottom up. And I just don't really want to, a bottom up raglan is not for me at this stage. I don't want to deal with that. So this, uh, I'm knitting the second size, I believe, which is like a 37 and a half or something inch bust size because I did a gauge swatch, but not with, um, I didn't block it. So I expect it to grow a little bit. I'm knitting on size four needles, which the US for uh, 3.5 millimeters. So that's many needle sizes smaller than the pattern calls for, but I have found myself to be a pretty uh, loose knitter apparently. So when I did the gauge swatch for this, my stitch gauge was pretty much on point. It was about 20 stitches per four inches, which is what the pattern calls for. But my row gauge was way off. So I believe the row gauge for this pattern is 32 stitches for four inches, um, which like 20 stitches by 32 rows seems like a really like small row gauge for that stitch gauge. But in any case, I was n getting nowhere near that. I was getting closer to like 24 stitches or 24 rows, 20 stitches and 24 rows per four inches. I had already bought the pattern. So I looked over it, I looked at the sizes and it turns out that there is a decent amount of um, like, knitting in the yoke that's being done after you do the sleeve uh, and you finish the increases for the sleeves. So as a result, um, I was able to just keep track and measure my yoke length and try it on and make sure that the yoke was long enough without having to modify the pattern in terms of the rate of increases in the, in the, uh, in the arms or the body. So I recently split the sleeves off like 
six or seven rows before now and um so far it's it's like a little bit tight i guess but i am happy with it and i think it'll grow over time especially because i tend to think of silk as being like a little bit heavier or like just you know not not like tightening back up in the same way wool does doesn't have quite the same amount of elasticity so i think that this size will work pretty well for me um and I'm enjoying this stitch pattern. It's a lot of pearls, um, which I don't mind purling that much, especially now that I knit Continental. I don't mind having to switch from knitting to purling as much as I did when I was an English knitter. Um, I will say something that's been interesting about this pattern for me is that the, um, the short rows that you work for the back neck are worked, um, with the ribbing so they're worked into the cuff so if you look at the cuff on the back it's longer than the cuff on the front and that's new to me typically i have worked um short rows after the cuff um and the cuff is like i feel like it's a little bit of an awkward length i'm hoping that when i try it on and everything it'll end up feeling after it's blocked and stuff and you know even once it's finished once I finish knitting it I'm hoping that the cuff will feel a little bit more comfortable um because right now it feels like it's sort of an awkward length and it I just even though trying on yokes is really informative I sometimes find that it's hard for me to like figure out exactly how it's gonna sit until there's more sweater and sleeves on this so um so far I'm pretty happy with it. I think I'm on track to finish this sweater um, by the time I go to Alabama. So I've mentioned in previous podcasts that this is yarn that um, I bought with a gift card from my boyfriend's mom um, for to a yarn store in Alabama where my boyfriend uh, is from. And so this was her, her Christmas gift to me. Um, and as a result, I'd really like to be able to bring this with me to Alabama and have it be done and be like, look at what I did with the yarn that you bought. Um, basically the yarn that you bought me, like I picked it out, but you know, she, um, provided the, the funds for it. So this should be done. Um, it's kind of nice working on a worsted weight pullover. I, I tend to do DK or lighter most of the time, um, because of living in sort of a, a warmer ish climate so um yeah it's been really fun i've enjoyed this i think the stitch pattern looks um really nice i enjoyed making um the cables on the raglins sorry i keep hearing weird noises and i think it might just be my boyfriend playing guitar which maybe you can hear but in any case um this sweater is uh i'm really happy with i think it'll end up working out nicely it suits the yarn really well um, and I think that this will be a pretty versatile piece. And I imagine that since my row gauge is super off, I'll end up having a good amount of leftover yarn. Um, and currently this yarn is on sale at webs, um, or yarn.com. They don't have this color anymore, but maybe I could end up using this for like a fun, um, color work sweater. So my next work in progress is another sweater and this one is a design by me and it's at a stage where it's kind of hard to show so um this <laughs> it's really hard to show actually this is the very beginnings of a sweater by me um this is uh knit in the uh kelborn woolen scout yarn that I had as an acquisition in my last podcast episode. Um, it's, uh, I, I don't want to go into too many details, I guess, before I have a design slightly more ironed out, but, um, this is the very beginning of a sweater pattern that I'm planning on, um, trying to design. So, um, when I picked the this yarn, I, I kind of had some inspiration in mind, and I'm looking at kind of making like textured stripes. All I've done so far is the um, 
basically like the short rows at the neck. So I cast on like the sleeves and the um, like, so here are the sleeves, the stitches at the top of the sleeves, the stitches on the back and a little bit on the front. And I tried to increase like down the front um, as I went along and I'll be adding a collar to this after. So this is essentially like a I guess you don't like exactly work short rows because you're working the whole thing just flat but um that's kind of like how I am attempting to achieve the neck shaping in this um I'm not sure I don't think it's too much space at the neck or like too much space at the back of the neck I actually tend to find that maybe there isn't always enough um short row shaping in the back like it doesn't raise the the back yoke like quite enough always for me um so I plan on knitting like I just finished the front I like just cast on the extra stitches um and I'm working on the front so I think I'll probably knit a few more rows and then um try to add the collar on to see if this is gonna work um like you know experimenting a little putting the collar on like does this fit in a way that I like enjoy or do I need to go back to the drawing board um so we'll see I'm you know I'm hoping that maybe I can get this done soonish or at least some some form of this done so that I can try it on a little more easily um right now you know I, I barely have anything um I will say that it took me a while to decide on a like shaping method for this like you know do I want to do raglan increases do I want to do a circular yoke and I've currently settled on a raglan um on raglan shaping so for now um my I have this little raglan detail that like is it looks like a cable but it's uh it's actually not that's my plan for the uh, raglan increases at the moment and I will be sort of working on this some more and I'll have more information for you in the future but right now that's kind of where things are at. In other episodes I've shared a few things that were works in progress that I haven't quite worked on. Um, so I have a baby onesie uh, for my boyfriend's brother and his girlfriend who just had a baby and um it's a six month size but their baby was born last week at over nine pounds so I'm hoping that maybe I can finish that sooner rather than later I haven't picked it up since the last podcast episode where I talked about it um but you know I, I think I need to get a move on I'm hoping that can maybe be a Christmas gift the baby will be like three-ish months old then two three months and the sock that I worked on in my last episode seeing how much I could knit in an hour is another new project that I have hi Lola my cat is trying to get out of the room give me one sec the sock that I worked on in my last uh video is um definitely being worked on so I find that um I haven't worked on it too much and I find it hard to knit on it for an extended period of time because the color work and the the thin yarn and the circular is like a little bit hard for me to like deal with and knit on for a long period of time right now but it's been a great alternative to the sweater projects I've been working on, especially when I was still doing like the right when I'm working on a raglan more often. I've been picking up my gib a little bit more um, and I just finished the yoke. So now I'm on to like the straight body knitting part. But when I was still doing the raglans and the rows were really long and like kind of a little bit involved, I found myself picking up the uh, sock a little bit more often. Um, those socks are the Midwinter Sock Set version 3 by Summer Lee Design Co. Um, and I mean, I've enjoyed picking them up every once in a while. Um, so they're definitely moving. They're moving a lot faster than they were when I wasn't working on them for many months. But um, I've only knit like a couple extra rows. All right, I do, even though I only have two uh, sort of active whips in these last couple weeks, I do have some acquisitions. So um, 
I'm very lucky to live in a place where there are lots of local yarn stores around. Like, I live in um, the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area, and there's three local yarn shops that I can think of that are within like three miles of me. There's two within two miles. Um, so I'm really lucky that there's a lot of options that are like very close to me, you know, like there's one that's like, it's, it's pushing it, but there's like, one of them is basically walking distance. So, um, I don't find that I need to travel that much for yarn. Um, I mean, I order a lot online anyway, but I don't have to go very far. Um, but there is a local yarn shop in um, San Francisco that I've been wanting to visit for a while um, called Firebird Yarns. And um, it's not that far from me. And you think like, I think if you, when you think of the Bay Area, if you don't live here, you're like, oh wow, San Francisco is like, where everything is and where everybody always is and is going. But like, I go to San Francisco maybe once a month, probably less. And it can be like a little bit harder to get to places like where Firebird Yarns is. It's not like right on, um, right on BART, which is kind of like our subway regional rail system. So, um, I've been looking for an, for an excuse to go to the store for a while, but my um, I just haven't really had one. But this week, they this past weekend, they had a trunk show for a ceramics company. Uh, this woman who makes ceramics, I believe it's a woman. Um, unfortunately, I can't remember the company name. So I will put this person's... Um, name on the screen here and I will also uh link their like sites and stuff down below so that you can check them out but I figured that this was the perfect opportunity for me to drag my boyfriend into San Francisco to this yarn store because he is pretty into ceramics I thought like oh you know this time I can have him like look at the ceramics and stuff and he can do that and I can look at yarn um, and it'll be great. And it was, it was really awesome. Um, unfortunately, Will, my boyfriend didn't end up finding anything um, that he liked, but he is a very good sport at yarn stores. I don't want to make it sound like he isn't just down to like hang while I look at yarn. Um, but. I uh, ended up walking out with a good amount of stuff. Uh, I'll start with this very cute little pin. Sorry for the crinkling. I haven't taken it out of its case. So this is um, made by the cl the Clever Clove. Um, that's the maker of this pin. Um, and I also got a case for circular needles. So this is by Prim and it's like a folio for your circulars. I do find myself like buying fixed needles for whatever reason, like with some regularity, either smaller than what my set has or like just for different reasons, I'll end up using um, fixed circulars. And I have found myself struggling to keep track of them. Um, so I'll end up like accidentally buying a needle that I already have, um, like, you know, the same, uh, needle size and the same cable size. Like I'll just rebuy, you know, like a size three, 16 inch needle. In order to stop that, <laughs> hopefully I bought, uh, this folio cause when I saw it at that store. So the maker of this is Prim, P-R-Y-M. Um, and I've seen Th these seem to actually be pretty available on like Amazon, on the different like yarn websites and like Michaels and Joanne, I think have them in the US. So um, these are pretty available and it was like 20 bucks or something. So it was pretty affordable. Um, and, you know, I already, like I said, I already filled it up with some needles. Um, and I think that this will be super helpful. 
um, in terms of me keeping those things organized and knowing what I actually have before I go off and buy more needles um, just because I can't find the thing that I need in front of me right now. So I was excited to find this and, you know, just see it in front of me ready to go. And the last thing I bought were these two skeins of yarn. So this is from uh, Wobble Gobble Yarn, which is a new to me um, yarn company. The uh, It's hand dyed in, I want to say that I looked them up in there in New York maybe, but it doesn't say on here. This is on the Merino DK base. So this is 100% superwash Merino, 231 yards per 100 grams. And um, the colorway that I got is Purple Lotus. And I just, I was drawn in by the speckles and the colors, like sort of pastel-y um, blues and purples are kind of like colors that I enjoy. Um, there's some pink in here too. And the reason partially that I got the two of these skeins is because I was thinking that I would make the Abydos top by Lily Kate Makes out of these because I have some leftover purple mohair. So I was like, maybe this will match. Um, now I didn't bring the purple mohair with me and um, this is the purple mohair. It's nitpicks aloft, like hand painted or variegated or something. I think that uh, it was on sale when I got it and it's probably sold out now. I think the colorway was called Sydney, but I actually don't like love how these look together. Um, I, I just don't think that this color like looks that great with these yarns. Like it's kind of like a too dark and too like gray of a purple for this. So unfortunately that's probably not gonna work, but that's okay. Um, I'm thinking instead that I might use these to make a roll neck tank by Hannah Singleton. Um, that's something that I've had on my list for forever. Um, you know, I've just wanted to make it for a long time. It looks like a really easy make and a really easy thing to wear. And it takes, I think probably a little over one skein. I want to say for my size, it's like between like 325 and 375, 400 yards of yarn that I need. So um, this should be perfect um, for that, and I think that's probably where I'll go with this. But if you have any ideas for something that you can make with two skeins of DK yarn, um, I'm, I'd am i love to hear it. Um, I do have some like various darker grays, whites, I have like a rust color. I have some other yarns that I could use as like um, accent colors, if it's like a color work thing, or if I need cuffs or something in a different color. Um, unfortunately, you know, so this is like 462 yards of yarn. I'm not sure that I would be able to get something with like sleeves out of this. Um, but I'm open to suggestions if you have suggestions. I'm not that mad that like, I don't really love this pairing. I think it's fine. I don't regret buying this yarn. I think it's beautiful and I think that there's like plenty of uses for it. So this will work out just fine. I think it's always fun to see like a, a dyer that you've never heard of um, in a yarn in a new yarn shop and just sort of like check out something new. Um, and yeah, that was the last thing that I bought at Firebird. Uh, it wasn't actually that hard to get there. Um, I really liked some of their yarn options. They have like these mega uh, skeins, mega hanks, I guess, of a uh, Surrey alpaca blend that I think were meant to be used as part of a kit, but it's like 1600 yards or something. And they're not like super cheap, but they're not that expensive for like what amounts to like probably for me, like more than a sweater's quantity held together with something else of, um, of like a Surrey alpaca blend. So that was something I had my eye on. I might have to go back for that or order that. Um, but you know, that's, that's something for future me. As I've mentioned before, I really love visiting new yarn stores. So 
I had an awesome time uh, checking that out and grabbing some useful items from there. Uh, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love if you would consider uh, liking this video and subscribing to my channel because that would help me out a lot. Uh, I'd love to hear what you're working on. Please leave a comment and let me know. Um, and if you have any ideas for DK Weight Yarn, definitely share. Like I said, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at lefty.knits, and I will have another video for you next week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.